Hey guys, welcome to Blocked Content. Today, I'm gonna talk about Dragon Ball Super. The show is only on in Japan at this moment, but since Dragon Ball Z was such a crazy, crazy success for Western audiences, fans have already been watching the show from week to week, getting subtitled episodes within minutes when the episode releases. That's the power of the internet. So, it's been a while since we had an actual Dragon Ball Z show. The last true one was GT, and fans tend not to want to talk about that one too much, since it was kind of a shell of its former self, and even though it introduced a lot of cool new characters, it was never on the same standard as the energetic and powerful Dragon Ball Z. That show was for sure one of my favorite TV shows growing up. My favorite arc in the entire show was the Cell Saga. The threat of the androids, you know, the powerful Cell gaining more and more strength with everyone he absorbed. And of course, the dreaded tournament in the form of the Cell Games, where Gohan pretty much took over as the protagonist of the show. Sadly, that wasn't the case for too long. Anyhow, the story concluded with a Majin Buu saga. Goku and friends saved Earth and rejoiced, but now everything is quiet and boring. Of course, not for too long. We learn that there is a god of destruction called Beerus, and he's actively trying to find something called Super Saiyan God. This might all sound pretty familiar, and that's because the first arc of Dragon Ball Super is almost beat for beat from the movie Battle of Gods. This movie was a little underwhelming, but ultimately, to me, a fine return to the Dragon Ball Z world. But yeah, it was not the best choice to start the new show off with a story that we've seen before. Pretty weird. Because even if it's awesome to know more details surrounding this story, like what other characters are doing while interesting things happen, it's still weird to see the same actual scenes from the movie, but reanimated, but on a worse TV budget. I'll never really understand those choices, but quickly it became apparent to me that Dragon Ball Super has some pretty big budget and time restraints. Episodes can range from okay animated to absolutely horrible and cringy. Some characters look nothing like themselves in some shots, and a lot of unclever tricks are used to spare animation time and money. Coming from a show that's known for its awesome hand-drawn animation that was always so smooth and signature for the series, seeing it go downhill like this is sometimes a pain to watch. However, what Super does really well in return is get some well-earned humor back into the show. There are many more lighthearted moments in this show, mostly because pretty much everyone in Dragon Ball Super has a family now. This also means that there are many characters to potentially follow and flesh out a bit more, but you'll find out pretty soon that the show is not that interesting in doing that at all. Actually, pretty much every bad guy needs to be faced by Goku for some reason. There are occasional moments of brilliance from Vegeta, but if you're looking for your boy Yamcha to finally shine, it's not gonna happen. They much rather focus on Beerus' reaction to eating a new type of food that he absolutely adores and then threatens people to destroy Earth directly after. Seriously, that happens pretty much every episode. I actually like Beerus and Whis though. It's pretty crazy that the creators can still add such iconic cool new characters in such an old franchise. They're pretty much part of the fabric of the franchise now, so that's a pretty good sign. After the God of Destruction arc, we get a little bit of a boring filler in a filler. And then we get treated to the awesome return of F Saga. This is, again, based on a movie that just came out of the same name, but the popular villain Frieza from the Namek Saga returns to seek revenge on Goku. I like this movie a lot more than the first, but because it took the time to give other characters some spotlight, and yeah, I, I thought it worked really well in the show too. Because these episodes always need at least one fight or scuffle and some cute character development moments, there are always enough little parts to get to know newer characters or flash out older ones. We slowly learn more about what else is out there in the universe, and it makes Goku and our heroes feel very, very small at times. And that's good for the most part. I was afraid that having a Dragon Ball show would be pointless, as Goku's pretty much this unbeatable beast now. But Dragon Ball Super proves that there are many, many more universes, and with different species and fighters to discover along the way. This is best explored in the Universe Tournament Saga, where Beerus and his brother have a little bet to see whose universe's fighters are better. They set up a galactic tournament and invite all of their best fighters. This includes some really cool new fighters, and also some complete failures that show how far Akira Toriyama has fallen. 
Sometimes his designs can be a little, a lot out of touch. But this being the first original saga from the show is pretty much, yeah, they nailed it. We got to see a cool fight every episode, got to know the idea behind multiple universes, and yeah, we learned more about the Super Dragon Balls and a new dragon that can grant any wish. There is a lot of potential in having so many characters, planets and universes, and I'm hoping Super explores this to the fullest. Then there was this weird filler arc about purple goo on a weird planet possessing Vegeta and it was weird and I don't really want to talk about it because it was just uninspired bad television. I don't want to go back to those moments. And after that saga, something beautiful happened. We got a glimpse of the future. Or more precise, we got a glimpse of future Trunks. You know, the one that came in and slashed up Mega Frieza good in Dragon Ball Z? His continued story here, uh, him and his partner Mai are on the run in this post-apocalyptic city. We soon find out that the entire world is being terrorized by an evil being simply known as Black. Yeah, I know, it's he's literally called Black. It's pretty problematic. Anyway, the, the kicker is that Black looks exactly like Goku, but, you know, evil. He, he seemingly kills Mai and Trunks' mother Bulma, but before he's able to give Trunks the same fate, the boy is able to travel back in time to the Goku and friends he knew from the Android Saga. This encounter is pretty cool because it gives a little more information on what happened in Trunks' future. Yeah, Gohan died. Yes, he pretty much defeated Dabura and Babidi in one blow, single-handedly preventing any sort of Majin Buu from ever existing. Those touches are awesome. He returns to Goku and his first instinct is to attack him, of course. He looks like Black. After a little bit of exposition, we start to learn more about Black and get some background information on the Kais, the gods that protect and observe the universes. There's this Supreme Kai in training called Zamasu, and he's pretty much on the road of becoming pretty darn evil. He sees humanity as a flaw and feels it's impossible to prevent humans from waging war and killing one another. He tells his master the only way to take care of this is to wipe out humanity as a whole. This guy is a Kai in training. He's literally a god. Anyway, he's totally black from the past, and that's going to be a huge twist, and everyone sees it coming. But that's where the show is, and until this point, we don't know anymore. We learn a bit about the time rings and how every time we mess up the timeline, a ring is created. And we're left with a tease that Goku and Vegeta are about to phase off with black in their Super Saiyan blue form. So far, I like the show. I tune in every week. I don't love it. Some episodes do absolutely nothing for me. But I like the newfound humor in the show, and I, I, I enjoy the fights when they're well animated. Sadly, most of the time, this show is not that well animated. Worse than that, it actually feels yeah, like the air and realness is totally washed away in favor of colorful and empty visuals. Gone are the complex hand-drawn and fluid animations. Say hello to lots of motion tweening, 3D animation and badly drawn characters of things you thought you knew and loved. It seems a bit harsh, but I don't know a single show that got this bad after being so good. Maybe the TV show Dexter, or to some degree Community, or Scrubs. Anyway, that's a discussion for another time. But for now, if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z, you should keep up with the show. But if you're not, maybe wait until the dub hits DVD. They always fix a lot of animation and art and when it gets criticized heavily, so yeah, that, that might be a light in the darkness for you, a light in the black. The show just needs its Cell Saga, I guess, and I really hope they're actually doing a return of Cell or something. That'd be perfection. I'm very, very curious uh, what you guys think of Dragon Ball Super so far. Do you hate it with a passion? Do you love it with every fiber in your being? And what are your favorite Dragon Ball Z memories? Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Blocked Content for lots more on everything you love, including video games, animation, film, and TV shows. You can also follow us on Twitter and our new Facebook page, Squared Things. We'll see you guys next time. Rock the dragon. Dragon Ball Z.